Thank you very much for the opportunity to present uh, endoscopic decompression or pyramidal pathology at 5S1 can safely be conducted with the aid of neuronavigation. I have no disclosures. Lumbar pyramidal stenosis commonly occurs at L5S1. Uh, it does have a larger DRG at that segment with a smaller pyramidal window. It has unique anatomy with a short distance between the L5 transverse process and a sacral ala and the trajectory is limited by the iliac crest, so collectively it results in a narrow posterior surgical corridor. As we can see here, a severe uh, foraminal stenosis in the presence of this osteophyte complex can make it difficult to uh, approach. So full endoscopic spine surgery provides a less invasive method for addressing foraminal issues. It's a direct approach, uh, true motion preservation, accelerates post-op recovery, decreases perioperative complications, and collectively, again, hoping to uh, result in improved patient outcomes. The interlaminar approach utilizes a midline window, which is very uh, familiar to most uh, surgeons, and anatomy is straightforward. However, the foraminal approach is not as familiar and anatomy can be disorienting. As a result, endoscopic foraminal approach has a steep learning curve at L5-S1. So there is a higher risk of nerve root injury as the nerve is often deformed or displaced with foraminal pathology at this level. One can triangulate the trajectory using preoperative imaging and intraoperative fluoroscopic landmarks. However, these challenges hinder the widespread adoption of this technique. So navigation can be helpful to overcome these challenges, ensuring a safer uh, foraminal decompression. So the study purpose was to evaluate the feasibility and outcomes of navigation-assisted foraminal endoscopic technique for addressing these pathologies at L5-S1. Uh, we included patients with unilateral L5 radiculopathy with foraminal or extraforaminal stenosis, uh, collected radiographic and surgical data, and outcomes included patient-reported uh, data points. An illustrative case here, a 55-year-old with L5 radiculopathy due to L5-S1 severe stenosis uh, and subsequently demonstrating fluoroscopic confirmation of optimal placement of a 7-millimeter tube. After the PSIS pin with reference array is placed, the O-arm is spun and navigation is registered in the usual fashion. A planned trajectory is evaluated with 3D guidance and is secured with navigated jam sheety in real time. As seen here, we can follow the trajectory for optimal docking. A K-wire is used to secure the trajectory. Subsequent dilators and bone reamers are used to remove part of the SAP and increase the working corridor by expanding k triangle and taking partial SAP. This is followed by a 7 millimeter working tube placement and fluoroscopic confirmation was obtained with endoscopic placement for direct visualization. Here we can see under direct visualization the relevant anatomy for safe foraminal decompression and subsequently increased relaxation of the nerve root after decompression was complete. This allows one to evaluate the L5 nerve root both in the foraminal and extraforaminal region and also take the iliolumbar ligament if it's also contributing to any compression. Overall, the patients included had a high degree of foraminal stenosis, commonly from disc osteophyte complex. Surgical time was approximately one hour, comparable to fluoroscopic times, with one patient experiencing short-term dysesthesia that resolved with short-course uh, steroid administration. Improvement in back and leg pain scores were observed, with 100% of the patients receiving MCID also in physical function, in addition to improvements observed in other domains in some patients. Improvements occurred by three months and were sustained at six months with no significant difference between. So integration of navigation is feasible with meaningful outcomes. Improvement in incision and docking time was observed with comparable overall times to fluoroscopy. There was improved ergonomics, limited wearing surgeon lead, decreased radiation exposure. It does require placement of a pelvic pin that attaches to the reference array. Uh, navigation can improve the learning curve and adoption of this technique. There are limitations to this study, a small cohort side, no comparative group, short follow-up study, and CT-guided navigation needs to be available. 
The other advantage of this is the integration with mixed reality headsets for direct view. Uh, this can uh, essentially decrease the cognitive burden, further improve uh, surgeon ergonomics, and improve overall workflow by bringing all the screens uh, in front of the surgeon. So in conclusion, transfer amyl endoscopic decompression L5S1 can be safely performed using neuro navigation, resulting in significant symptomatic improvement. Uh, this may help improve the learning curve and encourage its adoption. Future long-term studies are still needed to evaluate its benefit over traditional techniques and its durability. Here are my references. Uh, thank you very much for your time.